5G commercial networks have entered the stage of rapid, large-scale construction. Proper spectrum strategy and competitive solutions and products will provide basic support for operators to build their networks. How can we build leading commercial networks in a 5G era and help operators achieve business success? Additionally, in terms of new service opportunities, how can operators quickly scale network capability to create a successful closed loop for new business? Huawei invites Peter Jarek, Head of GSMA Intelligence, to share his perspectives. Welcome to Huawei 5G Live. I'm Professor Sally Eaves, and it's a real pleasure to be here today with Peter Jarek, Head of GSMA Intelligence. Lovely to spend time with you today. Great to be here. Thank you. One thing I wanted to really focus on is we're in a new era really now of fast and large scale deployment of 5G. And from your perspective, when we're looking at things like network experience as a key core catalyst for operators to have competitive advantage, how do you feel the optimization of spectrum resources can help achieve that? Yeah, so I think it's important to recognize, and it's a good place to start to recognize that spectrum, we don't always talk about it this way, but it's one of the most expensive, one of the most valuable, one of the scarcest resources that Absolutely. operators have. So they need to think about that and how do they maximize that. Two things that are on that front. One, just the move to 5G, right? We're moving to 5G in many ways because it is an efficient way to leverage the spectrum. It's why we move from 3G to 4G, it's why we're moving from 4G to 5 So just that basic ability to one, launch it, and be able to leverage spectrum that you have in other technologies going forward to 5G. But on top of that, and I think this sometimes gets lost, it's the ability to do something with that 5G network that you have in place. Not just launch 5G because it's faster, but to launch it with the capabilities to put new services, innovative services, things that actually drive people onto the network that they get value from. And what do you think about the role of MIMO in terms of optimizing network experience and the important role that can play? So I think MIMO, it's, it's an interesting technology because it's one we've been talking about for, for years, right? It came up in late 3G and through 4G, but now we're at a place where you can look to massive MIMO architectures as a way to, one, improve the user experience, but also make the most of that spectrum. And I think what we're seeing is companies, operators, and vendors who invest in the R&D in that, they're seeing the benefits in particular from when you're actually looking at deployments, what the experience is on the ground. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Um, and what about um, specific deployment scenarios that can cause challenges? For example, things like limited um, antenna space. Have you got any particular thoughts around, around that and how we can address those? Yeah, and, and I think it's a great question because sometimes the physical side of things is seen as boring, right? We're, we're talking about slicing and yes. edge and what we can do with all these great new technologies. The basics sometimes get ignored as boring, but the fact that site lease costs, site rental, site acquisition, all of that stuff, whether it's at the foot of the tower, on the tower itself adds up. Basics of just being able to maximize the use of that space, multi-band antennas, multi-technology equipment, something that can actually make the most use of the space to lower those OPEX costs, but also, as we talked about before, allow you to upgrade in the future, critical towards keeping OPEX and CAPEX in check. Couldn't agree more. The foundational stuff we have to have right, I think it's absolutely really important to bring that to the fore. Um, and what about things such as non-standalone um, and standalone networking and the relationship between that and also the values that we can bring by that, by that transition? Yeah, so it's interesting. I think a lot of times, although we focused on non-standalone, mm -hmm. that what you'll hear a lot of folks talk about standalone is standalone. And to some extent, it feels like we're always in that, well, whatever is next is real and whatever. Yes. But I think the reality is for a lot of operators, when we think about, when we talked about the promise of 5G, right? when we talked about things like massive machine type communications, when we talked about ultra reliable low latency communications, that's the stuff that's enabled mm -hmm. by standalone. We talked about some of the advanced slicing scenarios, right? Yes. You can do all of that in today's now. And there's by no means is this to say that people shouldn't start. Right, you could do IoT on today's 5G Absolutely. networks, right? Absolutely. non standalone can support that. You can support new different use cases that you have before, but to get to those advanced slicing, advanced IoT, it's what they're thinking about for all of the industry 4.0, for, for all of those advanced states, yes. which is why we really need to get those networks out. We need to get people deploying them, and we need to actually understand how they work. Absolutely, that, that actualization is key. And I think bringing um, to the fact of what you said about Industry 4 and new opportunities, so new industry verticals, for example, how do you think that can be embraced and what needs to be done at network le level to help make that happen? Yeah, I think so to some extent at the network level, it is just having those capabilities yeah. in place, right? And yes, to some extent, that means things like having standalone, right? Mm -hmm. You need to have standalone just as we've discussed. But on top of that, 
it's the capabilities to roll out these services at scale. And I think it's the at scale part that that's key, right? Because we can start doing that right now, but at scale, you need to be able to do things like operations, you need to be able to bill at scale, you need to be able to troubleshoot at scale, you need to be able to leverage things like AI tools. And we all know that every vendor out there and, and, and the industry is really trying to push that forward because those are tool sets that can help you roll out those services, but that's what's gonna to need to take place. And on top of that, I think the most important part for me is education. Right? We need to get some of these things out there in the market so other enterprises can look at that and go, oh, I get it. I get what I can do with it. I hadn't thought about that, but if it's working for them, or that doesn't work for me, but maybe I can do something similar, right? So I think more than anything, moving forward on this mm -hmm. to give other enterprises and verticals some opportunity to see how they can put it into place, I think that's key. I couldn't agree more. A great place to end it on, actually. And I think that that marriage between education and technology and wider awareness, exactly where we need to focus on for 2020. Thank you, Peter. Oh, really thanks, appreciate your thoughts. Pleasure.